there's a section in the market where investors can find double digit yields and one that our next guest calls the last man stand standing. Joining us right now to explain is Mark Grant. He is chief global strategist at B. Riley FBR. Mark, it's great to see you. And uh, we great know you've been looking you, around in the bond market for a lot of places, but there's not a whole lot of yield, as you point out in some of your more recent notes. Well, by the way, it could be last woman standing as well. So <laughs> in any event, in any event, I think the biggest problem for uh, this coming year, and I mean the biggest problem in the markets for this coming year is the lack of yield. As you point out earlier, we're 184 on the 10-year. But what else is happening is we're seeing high yield, corporates, munis all compress <laughs> against treasuries. And this lack of yield, and it's a matter of absolute value, not relative value, is hurting tremendously insurance companies, pension funds, university endowments, retirees, seniors. It's getting very tough to get a decent return on your money. And I think this is going to be an overriding theme in this year. Last year, it was made up, of course, by the equity markets. And, you know, you're up 25, 30 percent. So you get some balance there. I don't expect anything like that this year. I think we'll be up equity markets maybe 5 or 6 percent. But I think this lack of yield is going to be a giant problem in our economy and for investors in uh, 2020. Hey, Mark, the lack of yield in the bond market maybe makes the stock market look all that much more attractive, which could lead to additional gains there as people forsake the bond market and, and, and double down, put even more money into equities. Well, that's what we had last year, Becky, but I'm afraid, in my opinion, that we're not going to get those kind of returns uh, this year, it's, it's, uh, it's almost never happened that we've had two back-to-back -back years like uh, last year. I have identified, as you pointed out, uh, one area, a small area, but uh, uh, I think a very positive area where you can get double-digit yields, and that's uh, closed-end funds. How long we had low yields? You finally noticed what's what's new about low yields <laughs> that all of a sudden has become so portentous for you, Mark? I don't, I don't really. It's been what ten years. I think we're going to have low yields for a number of years. I know, but I think why this the, year is that the overriding concern that you have when it's been something we've been living with for ten years? Because we haven't had these kinds of low yields, Joe. We've what had, you, you know, three, four percent, but we haven't had a one eighty on the ten year. We've so had that for the last the, three years, haven't we? No, no, we, we're just getting well, to these very basis. low levels in, in the we last may, year or so. We haven't been back to three. We've been between two no. and two and a half or something like that. So 20 basis points suddenly becomes a... Well, you get two effects, Joe. One is you get start getting closer to zero. You know, people aren't getting any return on their money. And also, we're talking about the 10-year, but if you look at the two-year and 150, so anybody with trying to get short-term yields is getting even less... And I just find it, it's going to be, it's great for the government because the government can borrow at lower costs, but for investors, it's, I think, very problematical. I mean, we, we've had, you know, five years ago, we talked about insurance companies having trouble, um, you know, investing the, the premiums and getting around pension plans and, and anyone with a defined benefit plan that was on the hook for, uh, for, for whatever. That's been such an old story. I just, I just don't know what's new about it. Well, I think it's more true now, Joe. It was true to some extent then. I'm not disputing that. But here we are at a 152-year and a 184-10-year, and yeah. it's very difficult to find any yield. So it's much lower than it was. Plus, I will make one more point. As we went down from, as you said, the 3 and 4% to where we are now, it's been a positive because it's a borrower's paradise. It's been positive for real estate positive for the equity yeah. market, positive for margin accounts and so forth. And now we're getting to the point where as you get close to zero, you don't get the same momentum push from lower yields that you got before. That's why you got to buy those stocks, AT&T, Pfizer, 5% <laughs> oh, on. Those, uh -huh. those, are, those are always uh, options, but if you can get double-digit yields and a monthly payment, I think that's also a very uh, attractive alternative and there are some specific closed-end funds that pay monthly and the yields are over 10%. They're double-digit yields.